Now these small streaming videos are great for you to watch in your browser, but of course you're losing some of the charm that I'm trying to impart into this image. Particularly when you think of the need for us to look at this at the size it's going to print. Now that's going to be a very difficult thing to do when this video will be shrunk even smaller than I'm recording it to be able to view on the web. So what I would suggest you do is if you visit our website here what we have is a link to the full size image that we're currently creating here. Let me show you how you can find that. Now we've not yet completed our image, we've got two final steps remaining. But if you visit the Beckham Digital website, look for the menus on the left hand side of any of the pages and down the bottom you'll see a link to ePhotozine. Click that link and you'll find that page will give you a link to any of the videos we currently have on the ePhotozine site but it will also give you a link for you to be able to download a high resolution version of the image we're currently working on. So once this tutorial is complete above this aircraft shot will be the very image that we're working on now. Just click this and it will open up in your browser. But don't view the image in your browser. Right click and save the image to your hard drive. View the image in Photoshop where you can then look at the image at print size. Now the next stage of this particular piece of work is to add a nice border effect. It's very quick and easy to do. We can even use the same brush that we used to apply the blue colour in the sky. But we need to start by going to our layers. We need to create another new blank layer over the top of the background. Bottom right just to the left of the dustbin. But we're going to change the blending option for this particular layer. At the moment you can see the blend option at the top of the layers palette is defaulted to normal. What we're going to select is screen. Once we've got it selected as screen blend we're going to reduce the colors in the color picker to black and white. We can do that by hitting the two little squares at the bottom left. And what I need to do is to flood the layer we just created with white. Now white is my background color so control backspace key and my entire image is flooded with that white. If I just take you back into the layers for the moment you can see what we have. We've got this layer selected of course. Now with black as our foreground color we can go back and we can pick up that brush tool and now we probably will wish to reduce the flow rate of the tool down to about 2%. What I'm going to do now is paint on the surface with this rough brush and what I'm going to do is gradually reveal the image underneath. Now this isn't a slow process, it's just a steady process where we can just move around the image and you can see I'm just using up and down movements. My computer as I said earlier on is not a very powerful one. It's struggling a little bit to keep up but that's not a bad thing because it gives me a chance to look around the image and evaluate what I'm doing. And you can see I'm just making up little areas that are not to my liking. What I sometimes do is when I get the outer edge done in that sort of fashion I may then increase the flow rate to about 4%. Sometimes I even make the brush slightly bigger and I start to move into the centre portion. And now we're beginning to reveal the artwork that we've produced using these number of stages. And you can see how when I increase the size of the brush how my computer does struggle to keep up with the movement of the brush. We're asking Photoshop here to do an awful lot of work. But here you can see just how I can build up the colour. We need to have fairly strong colour I would suggest around the areas of the compositionally strong parts of the image. We've got a boat with the back end sticking in over to the right so there's no great need to bring that into the picture but elsewhere we can now start to bring through just the parts that we think are important and I think the buildings along the back edge are fairly important so we can give those a little bit more density than perhaps we have the edges because we're actually building up a sort of a manual vignette here. 
Now the great thing about the technique we're using here is we can build it up until we get it absolutely perfect. But if we feel we've gone too far in any area, let me put a bit more density right on that edge there. If we find we've gone a bit too far, just switch black as the foreground to white and we can undo what we've done. We can actually work. It's a bit like working with a layer mask and once we're happy we've undone that, we can turn back to black and we can do any of the other work we wish to do. So now it's just down to our own personal taste and how much density we want to bring through into the image. I think I'd like a little bit more density just down the bottom there because I think most pictures need a nice base to sit on but I think we're more or less reaching the point where I would say well that's more or less complete. And there you can see we're beginning to see the charm of the image and if I pick up the zoom tool and although it's difficult for you to see and that's why I'd like you to see this as a full size image later in your own version of Photoshop let's click the print size and move up to the top and we can see the sort of effects that we're creating around the edge a very sketchy look just as though the image has been produced on a piece of art paper now you can see that the blue colour we added earlier on which looked quite crude in the way we was applying the colour doesn't look out of place at all if I take you back to the layers, we're reminded of course that we've got our image in two layers. There's the layer that provides all of the edge effect, so we can drop that in the bin and have another go if we're not entirely happy with it. We can still select the background layer and make adjustments to the levels. I'm going to bring them up with Control L. So if we wanted to lighten the image to make it more watercolour in effect, we've got the opportunity to do that. If we want to add more density, well, it's all down to the individual. I'm not going to make any changes in this instance, though. There is one final thing that I think really finishes off this technique. But to take it that stage further, we do need to amalgamate those two layers together. So let's go to the layers at the top of the screen. And once again, I appreciate it's just off the screen, not visible to you. But I'm choosing to flatten those two layers together. And there we have our flattened image. It's also important that we look at the image at the size it's going to print. So let's pick up the zoom tool, hit the print size and we've got a nice area there to view. What I'm going to do is actually move up to the top right a little bit so we can see a little bit of the edge effect too. Because what I'm going to do is go to Filter, Texture and Texturizer. Now another rather large palette will appear on screen and I don't think this palette will give me the opportunity to make it smaller and it's making me out a liar and allowing me to do just that. So. Let me see if I can make it even smaller. That's about as small as I can make it. So there you can see the controls we have over the right hand side and you can see the texture that's come up by default from the last use of this texture. Now you can see that we're getting quite a nice effect there. It's quite a heavy effect. We've got a scaling of 60% and a relief of 5. I'm going to drop the relief down just a little bit to about 3. But of course you've got a number of different filters here that you can use. For example, the canvas, which is a much smaller weave and we may need to increase the scaling. So there's the canvas. If we increase the canvas scaling to something around coming close to 200% and maybe even drop the relief down more, you can see the sort of effects we can get. But the rust flakes didn't look too bad, did they? We had them quite small and we had the relief about 4 or 5. Let's drop it down to 3. Look at the size again and that's not looking too bad. Whatever texture you choose, once you click OK, if you print that onto matte paper and frame it up, you could place that on the wall and look at it for quite some considerable time. Now these small streaming videos are great for you to watch in your browser but of course you're losing some of the charm that I'm trying to impart into this image. Particularly when you think of the need for us to look at this at the size it's going to print. Now that's going to be a very difficult thing to do when this video will be shrunk even smaller than I'm recording it to be able to view on the web. 
So what I would suggest you do is if you visit our website here, what we have is a link to the full size image that we're currently creating here. Let me show you how you can find that. 